What is up, MMA fans? This is tudolentoforsure.com. And today I had the pleasure to talk with one strawweight fighter, Mr. Jared Brooks. Hello, Jared. Welcome on Sure Dog. How are you today? Oh, it's a pleasure, brother. I'm doing okay. I'm just uh, just getting up, trying to get adjusted to uh, Singaporean time. Oh, already? I mean, you uh, have, you know, a fight scheduled for April the 22nd, but are you already working on the jet lag and stuff like that? Yes. Um, it, you have to be prepared, just like in Shen Tzu's Art of War, the person that's prepared before the other person is usually the victor. That's a very, very wise thing to, to say. And I agree, by the way. This is going to be the third time you are competing in one championship. Um, how, how is it, you know, for you, you switched promotions recently. How, how was it for you, your journey in the Singapore-based promotion so far? It's been great. Um, everybody at one is, is really cool and they're just down to earth. Everybody's just super nice. So um, it's, actually, it's actually a fresh a breath of fresh air just fighting for a promotion like one and getting able to to be put in front of millions of people. And, you know, like, I mean, before, even in the UFC, I don't think I had, I don't think I had like a hundred, like I would say like under a hundred thousand views under my, my fights. Now you're getting, you know, to those 150,000, 200,000 views of fight. And, you know, like I said, it's a breath of fresh air. And I also saw that you are already pretty accustomed to the rule set. I know that you competed in the past, you know, in different promotions, uh, which allowed soccer kicks and the knees to the ground. But, uh, you know, my question for you is, how, how do you feel, you know, about uh, knee, knees to a grounded opponent? Well, uh, it's great giving them out. Um... I haven't gotten really any knees to the ground yet, um, but hey, if it happens, that's just part of the game. I mean, against uh, Minoa, I believe a couple. Of, I saw a couple of, of knees to to a grounded opponent, but still. Yeah, it's not really. Um, it's not really something I'm. I'm crazy worried about. I, I never really get in front headlocks, or get taken down a lot. So. Uh, I would say percentage-wise, I'm not worried about it. I'd say that my opponents need to worry about that more than I do. Yeah, and uh, we saw that uh, you're right in your latest fight against uh, Koa Minoa. You basically dominated your opponent for three rounds from start to, to finish. Um, and you also hit him uh, with uh, an abundance of elbows uh, that time. Were you expecting to finish him? Um, I thought that he wasn't going to come out of the first round. He was, uh, he was all bloodied up and he looked like he was, he was finished, but man, he, uh, he definitely lives that samurai way. He wants to, wants to come out and, and finish no matter what. It was actually kind of scary looking, <laughs> looking across from him in the way it, in the third round. And I'm just like, damn, this kid is keeping him coming, man. Like, it was, uh, it was something to be, uh, to be worried about. That's for sure. After you giving up, giving it, you're all trying to finish somebody. And your opponent is known as a submission specialist. Uh, and you had basically no issues in grappling uh, with him. Uh, was that the fight you were expecting from him? Um, I wasn't really expecting um, us going to the ground as much. I thought that he would be able to uh, negate a lot of my takedowns to where we would stand up on the feet. And that's the thing. Everybody says that I'm just a wrestler, but that's just my, my first form of mixed martial arts. I mean, somebody, if you can't get past my wrestling, then too bad for you, you know, um, but if you can if you can get past my wrestling and defend my takedown, then you're going to get the second asset of, of what my mixed martial arts is. And, that you know, that's the stand up. And it's just depending on who I'm going against. Uh, I fight people completely differently just just to who are, or what mixed martial arts that they're keen to. 
you are now scheduled to face Bokan. Um, sorry, you are scheduled to face Bokan Masanyune on April the twenty second. Um, you are the second. Uh, you are ranked at the second place. You know, in the one strawweight division, he's uh, ranked first. Um, what are you expecting to to get another fight before fighting for the divisional belt? Um, you know, you got a lot of Filipino haters. You know, uh, all those Filipinos, man, you go on Facebook, they just hate you. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I have a lot of other Filipino people. They um, they'll hit me up to be like idol stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's it's cool to, to talk to. I mean, my uh, my stepfather is actually Filipino and I have a Filipino uh, grandmother. So um it's not like uh i'm not used to the filipino customs but damn they want to they want to come for my head that's for sure um but bokong i think that that he doesn't really deserve that number one spot i just think that he uh he promotional wise he looks different you know he fights different so they want to put him number one i get it but I went against way harder guys in the world than Bokong Masanyane, and we have the same amount of fights. I fought uh, Lito Adewang, which is way better than um, Ryota Sawada or um, Rene Catalan. Then I just, you know, beat another guy in the top five, which I've had to face two guys in the top five now. So I've earned my keep a little bit more than Bokong in this instance, but um, now I just gotta, I gotta go out there and tear his face off. That's what I'm looking to do, man. Um, Bo Kong is a very tough opponent. I'm not taking anything away from him, but it's business and I'm, I'm just ready to go out there and do what I do. Where are you doing your training camp for Bo Kong uh, Masunyane? I train in silence, man. Um, I literally, I will go to just boxing trainers and then i have literally like like two people that i train with and that's it i only trust a certain amount of people with the things that i'm accustomed to so yeah i um uh, but i i train with the best of the best in all of michigan that's for sure and may i ask a few names of your sparring partners yeah justin scoggins Scoggins is one of the best um, Kempo karate experts in the world, if not the best um, stand-up fighter in my weight class. Um, you got Alex Hody. Alex Hody is a uh, Pan Am, two-time Pan Am world champion in jiu-jitsu. Um, you got Freddie Rodriguez. He's like, you know, I got the striker, I got the jiu-jitsu guy. And I got Freddie Rodriguez. He's uh, a two-time NTAA uh, qualifier in wrestling. Then, um, I, I mean, I just go everywhere. I went to Extreme Couture. I got to spar a couple of guys over there when I was in Vegas. Um, went to Miami. Uh, it's, it's just a lot of people, man. But I, I, like I said, I like to train in silence and not let a lot of people know what I'm about. I mean, so far, the results talk for themselves so no, nobody can say you anything about that uh who is going to be in your corner uh james lee james is my main coach james has uh, been my coach for the past six years um yeah he's, he's the best coach in the world man he's like um he's like a football he's like the football coach of mma he will facilitate anything that i need or anywhere or anybody that i need to uh, train with in case of victory, you will face Joshua Pacio for the Strawweight Championship. Um, have you already watched some footage of uh, Pacio? Oh, yeah. I, I think I have him down packed pretty well. Um, I know that he's going to be working on different things because he thinks that Bo Kong and I are, are a little bit more alike. But I don't, I don't see... A crazy amount of things that I got to worry about with Josh that I haven't seen already. I think that that he's tough. He has good head kicks. He does a good job of keeping distance into strikes. But I don't see cra a crazy amount of uh, things from Josh Apasio. Personally, I was expecting to see 
that fight, I mean, you against uh, Pasio uh, on one uh, X, uh, the the latest uh, one championship card, uh, has the cool. has the promotion at any time reach out to you to propose that fight? No, because that would have happened. They must have reached out to him, and he was just like, "Oh well, get Bo Kong and Jared to fight." Because he don't want to fight either of us, man. I promise you that. Like, I mean, Bokong's tough. Don't get me wrong. I think Bokong would beat Joshua Pasio. But Josh definitely doesn't want to fight me. He would He would definitely relinquish that title. <laughs> um, just, just in case, how do you see your your fight against Pacio uh, going down? Um, I think it it's a lot like Lido. Lido's less or Lido's a lot more explosive. He's a little bit more uh, more worrisome as far as uh, the the punches and the kicks and how hard they are. Um, Pascal's a little bit more of like a game planner. He'll just come out and he'll hit uh, he'll hit stuff that's like it's like more technical and just knows a little bit more like as far as uh, the base of MMA. But I mean, he's slow. He isn't really explosive. So I think he's somebody that I could get down to the ground and submit pretty quick. He better be working on his submission skills. Now that we mentioned uh, 1X, uh, is there any chance you watch the super fight between Rotang and Dimitris Johnson? If so, I would like to ask your opinion on that. Yeah, I mean, dude, it just shows that Rotang, if he was to do MMA for a certain amount of time, he would be a hard motherfucker to fight. That's for sure. Um, it's kind of scary when, when you have Demetrius asking Rod Tang if his punches hurts and Rod Tang's just like, no. <laughs> It was just like a plain no. And, um, you know, I, I think that I would, I would do Rod Tang about the same if it was straight MMA. Um, I think that, that as far as stand up, damn, but he's really tough and he's hard to fight. That's for sure. But I, I think I could last around. And, and then after that, I think it'd be a, a good fight between us. Obviously you would be available, you know, just in case the, the promotion one, one championship would offer you a chance to, you know, do a, a mixed rule fight like that one. Just gotta pay me. That's all I care about. You just got to give me some money. If it's a super fight, then you got to give me super money. That, that, that's fair enough. And I al always wish you fighters to be uh, paid the right amount of, of money since you deserve it. Um, well, you. What's your pick for your workout song this time? Uh, it's going to be Led Zeppelin. Wait, which one would you say? Sorry, your pick for your workout song this time. Oh, Um, I'm gonna, it's same, same as always. Usually it's uh don't play by Travis Scott, big Sean. It just, um, it just gets me in the mode. It gets me in that, um, that aspect where I'm just like, okay, it's time to go. We've been here before. We're gonna, we're gonna come out and compete and, and do our best. Jared, I finished my questions. Usually the last one, you know, is a little bit of of space for, for you. If you wish to say something, if you wish to thank someone, please, the floor is yours. I just want to thank all of the fans and uh, all of my sponsors and all of the people that have been riding with me um, since the UFC, since I got cut from the UFC and now to where I am right now. So um, yeah, I just really appreciate everybody uh, tuning in and watching all of my fights. And I appreciate you brother for having me on. Thank you for giving me a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with your upcoming fight and hopefully I'll hear again from you in the future. Hell yeah, man. Sounds great. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. All right, brother.